Good evening and welcome to Fresh Check Day. Thank you so much um, for joining us for this is our fourth annual Fresh Check Day event. And we are here checking in with college students on their mental health. Um, I'm Shani Kavish, the Health Promotion Specialist with the Office of Health Promotion. And I'm really excited about what we have planned for you this evening. We hope that you will be able to walk away with some new and concrete ways that you can take care of your mental health as well as the mental health of others. Um, obviously, because of COVID, this is our first virtual fresh check day, so bear with us. Um, there will be five booths that will be led by an SHSU student or staff member. Um, each booth has a specific theme, and then the booth facilitator is going to provide you with some quick facts and then walk you through an activity to encourage self-reflection and skill building. Um, we would love to have your participation in the event today by putting your comments in the chat, which some of you have already done. Um, and then participating in all of the activities. The, um, the total event is likely gonna be just a little over an hour. And at the end, we are gonna ask for feedback about your experience, which is gonna provide you with an entry to win a $20, $20 Amazon gift card. Um, so make sure you stick around to the end of the program for how to access the survey and be entered for other prizes. Um, before we do get started, I want to give a special thanks to the Jordan Porco Foundation for the creation and promotion of Fresh Check Day. The mission of the Jordan Porco Foundation is to prevent suicide, prom promote mental health, and create a message of hope in young adults. Um, in addition, thank you to our campus partners who are with us today, including Peer Health Ambassadors, the Counseling Center, Rec Sports, the Veterans Resource Center, and Residence Life. And with that, it is time to get started. So I'm gonna turn it over to Miriam Verdeja, who is serving as an intern with the Office of Health Promotion this semester, and she will be our student MC this evening. Just one second. Hi, everyone. Um, thanks for joining us this evening for Fresh Check Day. Um, to get us started, I'm going to turn it over to Brittany from Peer Health Ambassadors for a 9 out of 10. One moment, we're just having some technical difficulties. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Brittany Clarkson. I am the advisor for the Peer Health Ambassadors. Peer Health Ambassadors is a organization on campus that exists as students to promote health and wellness um, to all Bearcats. And they partner with the Office of Health Promotion to do that. So today uh, I am representing the nine out of 10 booth. So welcome to our booth. Nine out of 10 is a program based on the statistic that one out of 10 college students contemplates suicide. But that means there are nine others who may have an opportunity to help the one that is struggling. Whether you're someone who has struggled or is currently struggling with suicidal thoughts or know somebody, everyone plays a role in preventing suicide, including you. One way we can do this is by knowing some of the warning signs of suicide, things like isolating, having trouble in school, mood or be Okay, I think, can you hear me now? So, so yeah, some of the warning signs of suicide are isolating, having trouble in school, mood or behavior changes, um, being depressed or anxious, overly depressed or anxious, risk taking or recklessness, self harm, um, talking suicide, eating issues, sleeping issues, experiencing trauma or giving away possessions. If you notice any of these signs in a friend, please don't be afraid to ask them directly if they are thinking about suicide 
and take them to get professional help. Don't keep secrets about suicide. There's a lot more information about warning signs, resources, and what you should do if you're worried about a friend or yourself on 9outof10.org. If there is a line for, um, so if you are trying to uh, access the website, it's 9outof10.org. So for our activity, um, I'm going to share my screen and we're going to do a Kahoot game to test your knowledge on how to be the nine out of 10. Okay, so if you would like to participate in our Kahoot game, you will go on your browser or your mobile phone to kahoot.it and you will enter the game pin on the screen. And if you would like to win a prize in, uh, for participating, instead of entering your name, please enter your email address for SHSU. Um, so just enter the first part of your email. So the part that comes before the at sign. All right, so we'll go ahead and get started and the game pin will be on the screen if anyone needs, still needs to join. All right, this one is true or false. Mental health issues are not always treatable, true or false. If you still need to join, the game pin is down below. All right, so the answer is false. Um, mental health issues can be treated um, although the treatment may vary from person to person. Okay, the next question is a quiz question. Where can students struggling with suicidal thoughts go to for help on campus? So the answer is the Student Health and Counseling Center. Currently, the Student Health and Counseling Center are um, seeing students through televisit, but if you call, um, the both offices will get you scheduled for an appointment after their own assess assessment. All right, the next is a true or false. Students struggling with gender identity or sexual orientation issues have lower rates of suicide attempts. All right, so that is false. Students struggling with identity issues have much higher rates of suicide attempts. All right, so another quiz, approximately what percentage of college students contemplate suicide?
All right, so the correct answer is 10%. So that's the reason our booth has its name of nine out of 10, um, because 90% of students um, are not struggling with contemplation of suicide, but 10% are, so one out of 10 are. Okay, quiz question, which is not a warning of suicide? Okay, all of these were warnings of suicide except for eating foods that they didn't like before. All right, last question, last time to get those points. True or false? If you suspect someone is contemplating suicide, it is your job to help them feel better. All right, the answer is false. If someone is contemplating suicide, it's not your job to fix them or help them feel better. It is simply your job to get them to the help that they need. So let's take a look at our winners. So congratulations and thank you everyone for playing. All right, so next we're gonna to talk to Michelle Castano from Counseling Center about assessing our own mental health with check-in and check-out. Hello everyone, can you guys hear me? I'm Dr. Cass, an anonymous psychologist at the Counseling Center. So welcome to check in and ch chill out. And today we're gonna talk about how important it is to check on our own mental health. Early detection, assessment, and linkage um, to treatment and supports can prevent mental health problems from worsening. We all experience stress, some of us more than others. Um, there are many different ways to manage our stress and emotions, whether you listen to music, go for a run, go hiking, do yoga, meditate, or talk to friends. 65.7% of college students experience anxiety that is overwhelming, and about 45.2% have felt so depressed that it was difficult for them to function. And so when anxiety and depression start to get in the way of our ability to function, and become overwhelming, you know, it's a good idea to get help. And 67% of students who need help for their mental health aren't getting it. And remember, a lot of people find themselves struggling with these feelings, so there is no shame in asking for help. And the Counseling Center is available here on campus. We are located on the second floor of the Health Center, which is next to Old Main Market. Um, currently, we are offering um, telehealth appointments, so all you have to do is give us a call. Our number is 936-294-1720. Um, you can also go on our website, social media accounts, and find our phone number. And we're open Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. Um, we offer group therapy, couples, individual therapy. We have different types of workshops um, that are all remote. Uh, via Zoom, and we have different topics on stress management, self-care, test anxiety, um, self-compassion, mindfulness, meditation. I'm doing one on Monday on digital mindfulness and learning how to detox from our technology. Um, we also have a helpline that we've trained um, with volunteers that are available um, to listen to you and support you. And so that number for um, the helpline is 936 2944111. And again, all that information is on our website. And so again, um, it's important, you know, if you want to touch base with somebody, we have a helpline and they're running Monday through Thursday from 4 to 9 p.m. 
And so our activity is going to be a stress screener. So we're gonna assess how stressed out we are. So Shannon, if you can put the screener on, please. And so we're gonna rate how, um, how much stress we have. And so one is almost always and up to five is never. And so the first question is, I eat at least two hot balanced meals per day. Is that almost always? Um, is that kind of, so you might wanna rate it a three or a two or a four or never, and that's a five. And so if you have a sheet of paper out um, rating, I eat at least two hot balanced meals per day. And I'm gonna do this as well. So the second one is I get seven to eight hours of sleep at least four nights per week and rating it from one to five. One again is almost always, five is never. The next one is I give and receive affection regularly with my friends, family, or romantic partners. And definitely during COVID times, it might be a little bit harder. So you might have to adjust um, your answer to this one. Next one is I have at least one relative within 50 miles on whom I can rely on. Next one, I exercise to the point of perspiration at least twice per week. I smoke less than half a pack of cigarettes per day. I have fewer than five alcoholic drinks per week. I am the appropriate weight for my height. I have an income adequate to meet my basic expenses. I get strength from my religious, spiritual beliefs, personal values, or general outlook in life. I regularly attend club, organization, or social activities. I have a network of friends and acquaintances. I have one or more friends to confide in about personal matters. I am in good health. Examples are like eyesight, hearing, and dental health that are included. I am able to speak openly about my feelings when angry, sad, or worried. I have regular conversations with the people I live with about domestic problems. Examples are chores, money, daily living issues. I do something fun at least once a week. I am able to organize my time effectively.
I drink fewer than three cups of coffee or tea or soda per day. I take quiet time for myself during the day. And when you're done, you can add them all together. And then subtract 20. So I'll give you a couple minutes to do that. And after you add up the number, subtract 20. And any number over five indicates, you know, that you are vulnerable to stress. Um, those between 25 and 55 means that you're seriously vulnerable to stress. And over 55 means you're extremely vulnerable to stress. How did people score? Thirty-one, you know, that's pretty high. Twenty-two, thirty-four. You guys are, are stressed out. And one twenty-eight, yeah, that's that's pretty high. So counseling center, we have a lot of resources on managing stress. Um, we have workshops on stress management, self-care, um, coping skills. And so definitely reach out if you are struggling um, or just attending a workshop, calling our helpline um, to get some support. We're here for you. And there are ways to cope with all the stress, especially from last week. You know, it was a really stressful week. And so definitely taking the time to take care of you and reaching out. Thank you for participating. All right, I think it's time to get up and move a little bit. Let's hear from Samara and Jonathan about the mental health benefits of exercise with Boost. All right, hi guys. Um, can y'all hear me and everything? All right, so my name is Samara. I am an instructor here at the Rec Center. Um, I teach strength training and I teach yoga classes. I have a roommate that also teaches yoga, so we've been in it for quite a while. And so I wanted to go over a little bit about how exercising can also benefit your mental health, especially yoga and things of that nature. Um, so just working out for 30 minutes uh, a few times a week can really alleviate uh, stress and anxiety. I know I'm a pretty stressed out, anxious person myself, and even just teaching the classes and being around others, even though COVID's kind of a thing right now, is really, really helpful. Um, it also helps release endorphins, which create that happy little feeling, you know, after you go for a run or maybe you take a group fitness class. And it can improve your self-confidence a lot, not really um, image-wise, but by just going and doing something and really just by being productive. It can also help you with improving your sleep patterns. You know, if you're moving around during the day, you're exerting a lot of energy, you're definitely gonna sleep a lot better at night. And then one of the last things that it does um, is providing social connectedness. And of course our social life is a little bit different during COVID, but um, we have our on-demand classes. We have um, a community of people that come to our group fitness here at the rec. And um, I would love to see some of you guys there. So with that being said, I would love for you guys to join me in a little bit of a stretching activity. 
So if you want, find a spot. You can scoot back if you're at a desk or anything. It's all something that we can do in a chair. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this background off. All right, and we'll go ahead and jump in. So sitting up nice and tall in your chair, I want you to relax your shoulders down. Bring your hands to your thighs and bring your feet about level with the floor if you can. Just finding a comfortable spot. Take a deep breath. Bring the shoulders all the way up to the ears on an inhale. And exhale. Softly lower them down towards the floor. Going through two more breaths like this, you can inhale and exhale, move slow, you can close your eyes a little bit. Last time, deep breath, moving the shoulders up. And as you exhale, rounding the shoulders and shoulder blades come together to lower, good. Just taking a few breaths during the day, even through your Zoom meetings or while you're sitting at your computer or doing homework or whatever it might be is really beneficial. Just getting a little bit of oxygen flowing in and out. And then along with that, getting a little bit of movement in is also wonderful. So go ahead and lace your fingertips, bring your elbows nice and close together. Take an inhale as you gently bring the palms forward and up above your head. Exhale, gently bring the fingertips over and reset. We'll do that two more times. This is something I like to do in my yoga classes. Gets a little bit of a stretch in. Last one, deep breath. Good. Now from here, go ahead and take your hands and bring them to your knees. You can bring it up a little bit if that's a little bit more comfortable, but we're gonna go through some sitting, sitting cat and cows, sorry. Got a little bit jumbled up there. I'm used to being in my little yoga room, um, but you're gonna bring your hands to your knees, put a little bit of a grip, and when you're ready, Take a deep breath in, lift the chest up, chin comes up, gaze up towards the ceiling, round the spine a little bit here, opening the chest, exhale, gently push away from your knees here, tucking the chin in, rounding inwards now. Going through a couple of these breaths at your own pace. Exhale as you round away. Use your hands for a little bit of leverage here. And this is a good kind of stretch to do if you're starting to get kind of stressed out. Maybe you're doing some work and you're kind of feeling a little bit of tension. On your next inhale, you can go ahead and gently bring it back on up. And from here, go ahead and take a deep breath in, lift the hands all the way up towards the sky, grow your fingertips nice and long. Go ahead and gently bring your left hand down to the right knee, and you can bring that opposite hand towards the back of your chair, sitting up tall, getting a twist in the upper spine. Take an inhale, gently lift the chin, lift your gaze up a bit. And slowly lowering back to a nice neutral spot. And inhale, lifting the hands all the way back up, switching to the opposite side from here.
Gently coming back to a nice neutral spot. And when you're ready, lifting the hands back up. And from here, we're gonna bring them back around the head. So just bringing the fingertips to a comfortable spot. Take a deep breath in, lift the chest up, gaze up. Exhale, bring it back down and slowly let your right elbow fall towards the floor. Nothing too crazy here, just a soft opening in the rib cage. Looking up towards the sky, putting a little bit of pressure in our fingertips. Slowly inhale up through the center and exhale, bring it over to the left side. Inhale, bringing it back center. And exhale, you can lower into the back of your chair if you'd like, put a little bend, again, being soft, being gentle, lowering into the back of the chair, gazing up, still using your fingertips for some support. On exhale, and when you're ready, bringing it back up, lowering the hands down from here, taking the right leg, Foot can come up onto the knee here, um, just above onto the thigh, finding a nice little comfortable spot. This is our figure four in a seated chair version. And you can bring your fingertips towards your hips and slowly lower the chest down once you find a little stretch, a soft stretch. It doesn't have to be too far. Taking a breath here. Inhale, gently lifting the chest back up, lowering the hands to the leg and alternating to the opposite side. When you're ready, bringing the hands to the hips, gently lowering down. Sorry about that. We just had some technical issues. So why don't we go ahead, Miriam, and switch it over to at ease if you want to introduce them. All right. So different populations can experience mental health impacts different. Next, we're going to hear from Roberta Ardoin from the Veterans Resource Center at at ease. Good evening, everyone. I'm Roberta Ardwell with the Veterans Resource Center at SAM. Um, I'm going to briefly give you an, an overview of what the Veterans Resource Center does. Um, there's uh, roughly 20 million veterans of the United States Armed Forces, and 692 of them attend SAM Houston State this semester. So the purpose of the Veterans Resource Center is to provide support and to guide them through the process of using their benefits. Um, I'm actually an employee of the Department of Veteran Affairs, so I have access to VA records and can assist with um, navigating the VA system. So as far as at ease goes, those 20 million veterans um, that are in the United States Whenever they're enrolled into cl in classes and they're on college campuses, they have a completely different background and set of experiences than their classmates. The average age for um, a student veteran is 33 years old. 
in regards to suicide rates. Veterans age 18 to 29 have the highest suicide rate of all veterans and 60 plus have the lowest suicide rates. So in 2018, the VA um, implemented a strategy, uh, um, a plan to address suicides and mental health issues with our nation's veterans um, because it not only impacts the veteran, it affects their family members and work, social settings and all other areas of life. So um, the VA has implemented with the assistance of COVID, of course, um, within the last year or so, um, a lot more online services and telehealth services. Um, it, it has become easier for veterans to access mental health um, treatment, mental health screenings through vet centers, throughout the community, as well as clinics and hospitals. There's also the Veterans Resource, um, I'm sorry, the Veterans Crisis Line, which is veteranscrisisline.net. And the 24 seven phone number is 1-800-273-8255. And anyone that has a concern for a veteran or a veteran themselves can call that line to receive resources and assistance, be it um, referrals for counseling or sometimes authorities have to be, uh, um, first responders have to be contacted, um, but it provides guidance and support. Um, there's a lot of stigma that goes along with mental health, especially with veterans and it stems back to being strong, but um, it really demonstrates strength to be able to ask for help, especially for a veteran because they have um, such a strong um, persona and their people in the community look up, look up to them. So when we look at suicide rates, we see a marked difference between the number of suicides for people who do not receive any VA mental health services at all and those that do. In 2018, there were 6,435 veterans that committed suicide. Um, 4,057 of those were not receiving any services from the VA. Um, in response to that, after learning that information, the VA um, has ramped up all of their outgoing messages to veterans. They don't wait for veterans to request information on services that are available because they know that they may not ask for those services. So that information is sent out to veterans um, upon their release from active duty, as well as once they are registered with uh, veterans health care. Um, veterans are also allowed at least five years minimum of uh, health care assistance. At that point, screenings are done and they're done throughout um, the time that they attend services with um, BHA in order to see and to assess them to see how their transition is back into the community. Um, the National Strategy for Preventing Suicide is a 10-year strategy and they broaden the telehealth services. There's free mobile apps that veterans can use as well as any family members or those that are interested in supporting veterans. And um, telephone coaching has also been implemented. Um, there's been also an increase, a push to increase knowledge and awareness and to really access those veterans that are um, a minority, such as women and those in the LGBTQ community. So the Veterans Resource Center activity is one that will last throughout the year. We want to encourage everyone to support veterans and encourage them with kind words and thank yous. So if you are able to, please email us at veterans at shsu.edu to send a thank you, a well wish or kind words for our veterans. Um, Sam Houston has a great history of loving on and caring for our veterans and we wanna show them our appreciation. So please send those over and we'll be happy to share those with the campus veterans and anyone that comes in the office. And thank you for your time. All right, that was awesome. Now to wrap it up, 
we're going to bring Madison, who is the RA at Bearcat Village, to talk about the importance of social connection when it takes a village. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Madison. I'm an RA at Bearcat Village, like she said. If there's any issues with anything that I do, any volume issues or anything, feel free to let me know in the chat. Um, I'm going to share my screen real quick. Uh, so like she mentioned, our booth is called It Takes a Village, um, which delves into volunteer opportunities and the importance of connectedness and how that has an impact on our mental health. So volunteering and mental health, how does volunteering benefit us? Um, volunteering has positive effects on mental health by giving us a sense of purpose, connecting us with others, and protecting us against isolation and stress. Like they mentioned in the 9 out of 10 one, isolation is one of the first warning signs that uh, there's going to be issues with your mental health or contemplating suicide. Um, consider getting involved in clubs on campus or a charity organization in the community, especially if you have a tendency to withdraw and isolate. Um, and another way that you can actually be a part of a volunteer community without using volunteer hours is you can donate items. There are lots of places in Huntsville that are in desperate need of items, just as badly as they're in need of volunteers. So on the next slide, I have a couple of examples of that. Um, but since we had this winter storm last week, one of the things that we were in desperate need of is water um, and food from the food pantry. So we had a lot of the community come together um, to donate food and water. Sorry, I just got a chat message on, um, I can't see it. But anyways, um, so I have listed a couple of places that you can donate items if you don't have an opportunity to donate your time. So the first one is Elite Repeat, which is a resale shop that benefits Safe House, which is um, a women's shelter in the community. So Elite Repeat kind of operates as like a Goodwill. You can donate your items, the uh, Safe House staff will process them and then uh, sell them back to the community as a way to supplement income and earn extra things for the house. So it's a charity based thing. Um, that cute little guy right there is from the KISS, um, SHSU KISS website. So they work with the animal shelters. Um, I'm sure if you wanna get involved in that, they have uh, a need for things like blankets, food, dog walkers, especially um, toys. I know that they put on a lot of programs. So if you're interested in that, I would definitely get with uh, the KISS people great organization. Um, I don't know how this operates as much with COVID, but you can see Sammy Bearcat giving blood um, at the top. I know we used to have a lot of those mobile uh, blood donation vans on campus a lot, but that is a great way to donate to the community. There's always a need for blood and plasma, white blood cells, things like that. And then at the very bottom, we have the food pantry, which is, uh, like I mentioned earlier, always in need of food and donations and things like that. So if you ever have any extra canned goods or non-perishables, I'm sure the food pantry will be happy to take them off your hands for their distribution days. Um, so finally, um, our activity that we have is please type in the chat any places that you volunteer at or donate to either within the community of Huntsville at large or on campus in general. Um, this is a great way to spread awareness for places that are understaffed or places that are consistently needing uh, volunteer positions. Um, so if you have any people uh, within things like fraternities or sororities or clubs on campus that are in need of volunteers, feel free to drop them in the chat. It would be great to hear for some, uh, from some people about ways to get involved in the community and keep us engaged together. Um, so if you have any, drop them in the chat, that would be great. Um, Awesome, cool. There's lots of really great ideas that I wouldn't have thought of, um, like Goodwill, uh, the public library, that's a great one as well. Um, so this is a really great way. If you see anything that interests you, feel free to take a screen grab of it um, so that people can uh, keep up with that because there's always volunteer opportunities. There's always people needing volunteer hours for things or just places to utilize your time a little bit better than scrolling through social media a lot. Um, somebody mentioned Safe House. I actively volunteer at Safe House. Uh, on a pretty regular basis, they do take a lot of volunteers and they take a lot of uh, donations if you ever have anything extra, especially things that they can actually use at the house or if they don't have a need for it at the house, they can also donate it to Elite Repeat and then Elite Repeat sells it for a profit. It's super helpful. Um, so yeah, thank you everybody. If you have any more, just keep dropping them in the chat. Thank you for listening and I appreciate you guys as being here. Great, thanks Madison.
Thank you all for attending Fresh Check Day. We hope that you were able to check in on your mental health and learn some strategies to help fight stress so that you can that you can use as we finish out this last half of the semester. I know it's crazy that we are already almost to midterms. Um, so as I mentioned at the beginning, we would greatly appreciate if you took a few moments to complete our post-event survey. Um, you can access the survey by scanning this QR code with your phone, uh, using the camera, or I just put the link in the chat. Um, make sure when you go to the website that you scroll down and select the Sam Houston specific survey. Um, and once you complete the survey, you will see a confirmation screen and how you'll be entered to win some prizes is by emailing a screenshot of that confirmation screen, screen to healthpromotion at shsu.edu. Um, and then we'll be drawing all of our winners for the fire tablet, Amazon gift card. We have some t-shirts and meal vouchers left over um, at the beginning of next week. So be on the lookout to see if you've won anything. Um, so please, please do take a few minutes to complete the survey. It's very important for us. Um, otherwise, you all can have a great evening. If you have any other questions or anything else, feel free to put it in the chat. We'll stay on for a few minutes, but have a great rest of your evening and thanks for joining us.